Welcome to Virtualize Everything and welcome to another tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at installing Nextcloud in a Docker container using MariaDB as a separate database and setting up all of our environment variables in an env file. So as in most of our videos we're going to be using Proxmox. I do want to note that we'll be using a pre-setup and installed container for Proxmox that has Docker already deployed. But you can do this on a bare metal system just the same. If you need to know how to set up Docker in a container in Proxmox, go ahead and follow a video that will be linked above or in the description section. The one thing I want to note here for this container is I've given it 2 gigs of RAM. We only need one CPU core of allowance, but the standard 512 isn't going to be enough for Nextcloud to run efficiently, so we've given it 2 gigs. At this point, we can go ahead and start up our container or whatever system we're using and log into it when that option becomes available. So now that we have our container booted up and ready to go, we're able to go ahead and log in with our credentials. And at this point, I'll consider this a freshly installed system. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the steps of the update and upgrade. Even though this step would have been done for most of you, all you were installing Docker, and you're probably doing this project the same day as installing Docker, unlike me, it is good practice to go ahead and issue the commands to do the update and upgrade before starting any real projects. So the command to do the update is gonna be apt update, and then we'll just string it together with an apt upgrade. And you can notice I've put sudo in front of that because we do need admin permissions to run this software. I'll be back with you when this process has completed. Okay, so now that all of our updates are installed and we're ready to go, the first thing we're going to need to do is create a YAML file that we're going to store all of our directions in for both creating our database, our MariaDB database, and our actual app, which is going to be Nextcloud. So in order to do that, we're going to use a tool called Nano, and we're going to create a file called Docker Compose, dot yml and i'll be doing this here right in my local user directory because that's the most convenient spot for me to do it so if you wanted to create a different location for installing this app and all of this apps files for security reasons or cleanliness reasons you could use the command mkdir and a path to create a directory to store this in and then you would use the command cd to move to that directory as I said before, I'm going to be doing this right here in my home directory. So I'm just going to go ahead and enter the command sudo nano docker compose dot yml. And here this gives us a blank editing screen. That's basically nano's editing screen and the full file here. I'm going to go ahead and copy in and then we'll talk a little bit about what's going on here in this file. All right, so what's going on here is a couple of different sections. And the first section here are the environment variables, and you can see they're basically repeated twice with a little bit of editing here for the database name. So this database name needs to link to the name of the database that we created in our other container outside of the app. Now for our root password, of course, we're not gonna use that inside of Nextcloud. And, and then we're going to use this information in the app to go ahead and reference the database. So it needs to be also created in the database. Now you can notice that I've done this all as variables because we're actually going to use a environment file to set all of this so that it's not set openly visible inside of our Docker Compose file. And we can actually go ahead and make that environment file hidden so it's not openly known. Now, that being said, if somebody got in and opened our compose file, they would see that we're referencing variables and inevitably probably know that the environment file is somewhere on this system. And we will be putting it inside of the same folder 
as are composed today for this build. But with a little bit of extra commands, you could place this environment somewhere else. We are also, you can notice, have created two Docker volumes files. And these Docker volumes files allow us to move our data to a secure file that's managed by Docker outside of our directory for creation. This allows us to more securely manage our data and even put our data on a separate mounted drive if we so choose to like store it on a SAN device or a NAS device or something like that. And then as always, we created a separate network for this entire application so that the data is managed separate from our host networking. So with that, we can go ahead, press Control X, Y, and Enter to create our YAML file and move on with the rest of our process. Now, just as I mentioned before, we're going to be creating an ENV file, and that is our next step. So our next step is going to be to once again use nano to create a .env file and we're going to go ahead and put our references in for our environment variables that we found inside of our Docker file. Now you can go ahead and edit your passwords and your usernames as you so desire. Today for this video, we're just gonna be using some default placeholders so we can get everything running. And we'll hit Control X and Y to save, and we can go ahead and move on to the next step. The next step is going to be to create some permissions for that env file that we just created and we're going to use the command chmod 600 on that env file which is going to make this env file only accessible from the ve user account the next step is to use mkdir which i just spoke about to create the directory that we referenced inside of our file for our MariaDB stored secure data. And we'll also create one for storing the Nextcloud data. Now it's time to set permissions on both of those files. And we're going to set permissions for both of those files to root user. So we'll use the command chmod 700 and again, and again use the command chmod 700 on the Nextcloud data file. The last thing we're going to do is set user permissions to an internal user account for our Nextcloud container on the actual Nextcloud data file that's inside of the web hosting tool that Nextcloud uses to provide a web interface for us. That user account and user group will be www data. The last step of this process is actually going to be to start up our file. And we're going to start this using the command sudo docker compose up dash d and if you're familiar with earlier versions of docker compose you can notice that the dash has disappeared the newer version does not use a dash between docker and compose anymore we'll hit enter and this will pull down everything and i'll be back with you when this is started up to show you the next steps okay so now everything has been pulled down from docker hub and deployed, we can go ahead and run a command to see if everything's up and running before we open up Nextcloud and do the next parts of setting it up. The command is going to be docker ps, and docker ps is going to give us an output of both containers that are running, and you can see that both are up and running and have been for a few minutes now. So the next part, since this container is on DHCP would be to run the command IPA, which will give us an output of the IP address of the container. And you can see the one that we're looking for here is 192.168.06. This may be a little bit different depending on the IP ranges of your network, but you can notice Docker's internal IP ranges are very much different 
than the ones of our network. And that's how we identify where we are for our actual server IP address. If you set this as static during the deployment of your server, then this of course would be whatever your static IP address is for your server. I talk about that when we're, when we're actually doing the install of Docker video, but here this container for demonstration purposes is best left as DHCP for us. So with that little description, we can go ahead, create another tab in our web browser, and we can enter 192, 168, 0, and 5, and then we'll follow that with a colon and 8080 because we configured this to be on 8080 when we did our configuration file. And at this point, it wants us to go ahead and create our own username and password for the installation of Nextcloud. These will be your administrator passwords and login. So we'll of course use VE for our video and our standard super secure password. This is a joke. I don't use anything very complex for these type of video tutorials. Then we can go ahead and hit install. And this should take between five and 10 minutes for it to run all of the scripts that deploy and unpack all of our files into our web server. And you can kind of see if you go back to your Proxmox server, if you're running Proxmox, you can see your RAM and CPU utilizations moving around as this process happens. I'll be back with you when we're ready to do our next steps. Now the basic installation process has completed. We're asked if we want to install some of the other apps. And today I'm going to leave them all checked. If you didn't want to use something like Nextcloud Mail, you could go ahead and uncheck it. But we'll install it so we can look at all of the kind of default setups here for Nextcloud. And we'll do that by installing recommended apps. We could hit skip, of course, if we didn't want to install any of them. So we'll go ahead and install these. And this is going to take another two to three minutes, and I'll be back with you. Okay, so all of our new apps are installed, and we could go through the process of exploring our device by clicking Next Cloud on all your devices. And it's going to give us some stuff to work through for installing this on our phone and QR codes and integrating our social media and whatnot. I'm not going through that process for the sake of this video here. Instead, I'm going to close it out and let's take a peek at some of what is provided. We can see our recommended files, which they give us some example files and some readme files here for Nextcloud that we can look at. And you can see that it's relatively responsive for what it is and the amount of resources we've assigned to this. Remember, we gave this two gigs of RAM and only one core of shared CPU with the other tasks here on our Proxmox server. So we can look at images here or photos as they call it and the way it displays the photos. So we could like look at different galleries if we had photos on here. Um, they have an activity which is like a log file of some of the different things we created and worked with. They have their own chat utility. So if you had multiple users using this server, you could actually chat back and forth or maybe even create a VPN or something into one server. I guess you could put a port out on the open internet that could be done too. And um, all that type of stuff and chat with different users inside that you've given logins. They have an email app, which you will have to set up with the email information for whatever outside email service you're using or server you're using. They have some contacts and they have a calendar. So this is really becoming a Google like platform for home use and file storage. So right now we're here under the admin account. And if we wanted to create an extra account, I believe we can go to accounts. And this could be the wrong accounts. This could be the admin accounts. It's been a little while since I've done it. And then we do add new account and we'd fill out our information here. With this, 
not being meant for an actual Nextcloud user tutorial and more of an installation tutorial, I'm going to conclude the video here. We took a sneak peek. We saw it was running. We kind of figured out how to create new user accounts and we're able to use Nextcloud for whatever we so choose. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. You're now able to set Nextcloud up in Docker using an external MariaDB database. And you would consider liking, sharing, and subscribing to help virtualize everything continue to grow. As always, have a good night.